on The Amazing Art Show today, Jim Dine Inspired Hearts. And welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Beam, and today um, we, I'm really excited. Our project is a really cool one today. It's lots of fun. Um, we are going to be doing some repetition today, um, lots of color and pattern, and we are going to be doing hearts. And our artist that we're going to talk about today a little bit is Jim Dine. And so I'm going to show you Jim Dine really quick. Um, this is Jim Dine. And um, he is a pop artist, an American pop artist, and he was um, born in Cincinnati, Ohio. He is currently still practicing as an artist, um, which is unusual because normally when we talk about artists, they're long gone, but we actually have a really current one, so that's really nice. And um, Jim Dine is very famous for a lot of his pieces, but most probably well known for his hearts that he does. So let me show you a couple. One. So you'll see a common theme, is the hearts. And sometimes you'll have multiples, and sometimes you'll just have singular hearts. And so that's kind of where we're headed today. And we're going to kind of take that concept of um, repetition and be using that in our work, but we're going to have that symbol, the heart, is going to be our primary um, shape that we're working with today. Um, so let's talk about what you need. You need some oil pastels, um, some acrylic paint. Um, I would pick colors that maybe like white, if you've got gold would be pretty cool. Um, anything glittery or sparkly, this would be a good project for that. Um, also, if you would like to grab some tools um, to like stamp with, um, that also works really well. This is like a lid to a squirt bottle and I don't even know where I got this. So, um, and then also if you can get your hands on it, bubble wrap is a really good one. And then this is like what your fruit sometimes comes in and it makes a good pattern as well. And then this is like shelf lining and this is my favorite pattern. Um, it's really cool. So, um, if you can find something like that, um, you could also get um, if mom or dad have an old uh, maybe gift card or something that you could chop up, um, you can use this to kind of manipulate the paint a little bit as well. Um, and then obviously brushes, water, and like I think I mentioned sparkly, but you could also get the, um, the kind that kind of squirts and you can draw with it. That would work good for this as well. Okay, so I think that is it. So we're going to go, oh, and paper. Duh, you're going to need some paper. Um, construction paper, nothing too crazy, about 12 by 18 should do the trick. Um, and we're going to start off, you probably want a darker piece of paper, even though you could do it on lighter. I just kind of prefer darker. So I've been giving my kids the choice of either black or blue. Um, and for some of my examples, I've got blue, but some I've got black. So, I mean, it looks good on both. All right, so first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a little division because we are going to be um, dividing our paper. So our first fold is going to be um, long ways. And that one is kind of the easy one. Not that the other two are hard, but just a little more estimating, I guess. So then we're going to take our paper and we could measure it out, and that's definitely a possibility. But for today's show, I'm not measuring it out. I'm just going to kind of fold it, make it into like a little burrito. Um, and then I'm going to kind of roll and make sure that I've got one side is all the way to the edge, and the other one's all the way inside there. I think that looks pretty good, and I'm just going to kind of crease it. Then I can come back and fold it really nicely. Now, if you kept up with all that, we're going to have six squares when we get finished. All right, and we do, Whew, it's a good day. All right, so we have got 
um, our squares. Now we talked about Jim Dine's work. We talked about how he uses the repetition and we know we're working with hearts. Now, I will tell you that this is slightly addictive. It's like my first one, it was kind of hard to do. I was like, kept trying to kind of come up with some new ones and then they all were kind of starting to look the same. And But then I, I did another one and I was like, oh, I'm totally like, totally getting the vibe of this now. And it was really fun. So kind of give yourself some, you know, some room to kind of make some mistakes and you might want to kind of practice on some and then pick the ones that you really like and go back to those. So, but you do want to kind of think about the ones that you're going to be doing multiple ones on. You might want to kind of think about in terms of your paper and having it look balanced. You don't want to have like multiples, 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 and then single, single, single. You know, I mean, you want to kind of arrange it to where it's aesthetically pleasing, you know, it's pleasing. So, um, so I think I'm going to start up here and um, I'm going to actually start on my background first, which you do not have to do. You can do the heart first if you want, but I kind of like starting on the background first. So I'm getting my, I've got several sets of oil pastels. Some of these um, do not have the paper on them, which work well for what I'm doing now. And then others do, and they give you a little more of a nice point. So I'm just going to kind of cover this because we really don't want the paper to show. And you want to stay in your shape as much as you possibly can. And then I'm going to come in. And I'm just going to do like some little stripes. And this is really, you can just play with this. So I've kind of got that going so far. And think about kind of mixing your colors. Now that I have that, I'm going to come in. Oh, I just got paint all over my fingers. I'm going to come in with this. So I'm giving myself some variety. I've got some of the lines are thicker, some are thinner. And you don't have to be super particular about whether or not your line is super straight or not. Okay, so I've kind of got my background going first. And um, now I can either, I can do one of two things. I can go ahead and do my heart or I can use some of my stamping things and go ahead and get that on while I'm working on some other areas. So I actually am going to do that because I can't wait to get my hands on this part. So I'm going to use the shelf liner and I'm just going to lightly brush it with some white paint. And this doesn't have to be real particular and you can actually have it where, um, you know, you don't see all of it. So it's just, you just get little hints of it. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to let that dry and then I'm going to move on to my next one. And I want my next one to be very different. So I'm going to... I'm going to go s with more like a solid color. Actually, I think on this one, I'm going to do my heart first. And I'm thinking I'm going to do multiple hearts there. So I'm going to do this one as a single because I want, I want to have some good variety as well as balance. All right, so I've got my shape in, and your heart does not have to be perfect at all. Um, and you can actually kind of experiment with some pretty cool um, techniques when you're doing this. And, you know, you could do a heart that's totally made up of dots. You could do um, little dashes. Looks pretty cool as well. So I'm going to fill this one all in as much as I can. 
And mine is, um, my heart is slop, it's sloppy, no, it's slightly is what I was trying to say. It's slightly kind of lopsided, which is okay, but I'm going to come in and I'm just going to start putting some lines in here. And I'm going to add some other colors. And I'm thinking about, you know, you could really get technical with this if you wanted to. And you could do only warm colors. You could do, you know, you could have squares that were only warm colors, squares that were only cool colors. You could go lots of different directions with this project whether it's color or pattern, definitely pattern and repetition. And then I think for my background on this one, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of carry this theme on, but this, I think I'm going to do cool colors. So I'm just going to grab a couple. And I'm just going to start randomly doing some lines. So right now, the way I'm going, I've got warm colors on the heart. And I've got cool colors in my background so far. And it's always nice, like kind of once you get your colors in there, white always seems to just, I don't know, it really kind of ties it together, I think. So normally, even though sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm not going to use white in this one, I will end up using it. And then I'm like, oh, that looks so much better. So this is just totally random. And that's what's kind of fun about it. And I could, I'm probably not going to for my example today, but I mean, I could just sit here filling these in until I have none of my blue paper showing. Would be really cool looking. All right. And I'm going to come back to the white, even though I said I wasn't going to. I'm going to do some. See, and right there, there it is, the awesomeness. It kind of reminds me of like lights reflecting off of water. All right. So now that I've, I'm kind of working on that one, I'm going to stop on that one. And I'm going to come over back to this one. My paint is dry enough that I can come back and work in this area again. And I'm trying to decide what color I want my hearts to be. I kind of think I'm feeling blue. So I think I'm going to do just some small. Me drawing hearts upside down is scary. So I apologize if this looks weird. And we've been talking in class a lot about repetition and about creating emphasis and creating balance in our work. So this is definitely one of those projects that, you know, you can hit a lot of those. You can have the emphasis, but you can also have that repetition. All right, now as I kind of keep going here, I'm actually going to trade this one off and I'm going to grab another one. And this is another one that I've been working on. And I'm going to kind of cover with you really quick just some other kind of ideas. I think you get the gist of um, 
of all of the different, you know, you're doing different hearts in each one. So, but think outside the box. So, um, this was one, kind of the one that I was talking about where it's like just little blobs and it's, it just really started taking shape and I was like, oh my gosh, I love that one. That, I think that one's my favorite. And then I started kind of going with, oh, it could be like little candies for, you know, Valentine's Day. I kind of thought that was fun. And then I love leopard print. So I was like, I could do some leopard print. And then my last one that I did um, was kind of this design and I love it so much. And I'm like, what to put there? Because I don't want to mess it up. I love it so much. Um, but I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come in and I would like to do um, some pattern on it. So I think I'm going to do the bubble wrap. So I'm just going to the bubble wrap. It's better if your bubble wrap isn't popped. Um, but I have a confession to make that it's very hard for me not to pop the bubble wrap because I really like to pop it. So normally when I get something, I just am like pulling it out of the bag and I'm already popping it. So some of mine are deflated. That's okay though. So I'm going to press that down and it's just going to give me just some interest and some, and I'm not even getting, you know, like the full pattern. I'm going to let that kind of dry a second. And then this one can sometimes be tricky. I'm going to pull my plate over here. All right, this one you can do a couple ways. Where do I want to do this? I think I'm going to do this one up here and I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to try doing some gold. Now the trick is holding it down and kind of painting all at the same time. You can kind of dab it. And it's going to kind of work better in some places and not so well in others. It's very unpredictable. But I'm going to kind of use my leftovers to just kind of go in and make a couple little places on here. I'm going to go ahead and get this little cylinder shape here and I'm going to come in. Now I'm still going to be doing the oil pastel on this one, but I'm just kind of just kind of starting to build the background for this one. And then where did that other little lid go? I think I'm going to do some black. And um, whenever you're getting your tools, your stamp tools in there, I just kind of roll mine around in there and then do a little dab to get some of it off. All right, so I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to come back up here and I think that I'm going straight paint. So I'm going to do a little more of my gold. I'm almost out of gold. And I've got just my big brush and I'm just going to come in here. Are you ready? I think I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of start it like this because I want it to be more, instead of kind of fat like these two are, I'm going to do more of kind of a narrow skinny one. I don't know why I keep doing this upside down, but I do. And I'm probably going to have to do a couple coats of my gold because it's kind of sheer. But the other thing that would kind of be cool is I could just really like glob this on here. Be kind of cool looking too. So I'm globbing, I'm globbing that on there. All right. And let's see what else. 
I don't think that's quite dry yet, but I do think I could come in and kind of add some extra accents. Oh, I know what the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is if you've got any kind of like a glitter, these, this works really good. I usually just put a little bit in the lid and use my finger. This works really, really nice, and I think I'm going to do it on this one. It just kind of, and sometimes the light will catch it, and it'll just give it a little sheen. But other than that, you don't necessarily notice it all that much. Right now, you notice it a lot because it's very wet looking. But once it dries, I'll show you one that's dry here in a second. And since we're talking about emphasis, I'm not going to do glitter on the whole thing because that would kind of defeat the whole purpose of having, you know, trying to draw attention to one area if I put it on everything. So I'm going to, I made a big mess. I'm trying to fix that. All right, so I'm going to roll over to my other example that I have here. And while I'm doing that, why don't we go to today's quote? A painter, a sculptor, graphic artist, printmaker, illustrator, performance artist, stage designer, and poet. Jim Dine is our artist that we're talking about today, and he once said, for me, drawing is everything because it informs everything. It even informs my poetry. It's the way I begin everything. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you about and kind of let you look at and see, and um, we talked about the squirtable kind of paint and the glitter paint works really well. And so I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to do glitter paint down here. And I've got some others that I'm going to kind of show you as well. And remember when you do this, at first when it comes out, it looks kind of, um, white, but when it dries, it's going to just strictly be glitter. And so you're just, you're wanting, like I said, you're wanting to, cr to create that emphasis. So don't do it on everything. Just pick special places to do it. And I've also put a little bit, I told you I would show you the glitter that I smeared on with my finger. It's on this one, if you can kind of catch a glimpse of that. And it's just very subtle. Once it dries, it's not, doesn't show up quite as well as that, you know, really intense wet. So basically, you're just going to continue going in and, you know, adding interest by, you know, using your stamping tools and, you know, just be really creative with, with the things that you have and come up with some, some other ones. You could probably even come up with some better than mine. And just think about pattern and think about, you know, where you could, I'm trying to decide where I want to put this. Oh, I'm going to put it up here. Oh, yes, I like that. I already had some gold up here, but I like the idea of adding a little bit more. All right, and then I'm also want to talk to you about this one, which is also just a squirtable paint. But um, on this one, it works really, really nice because it gives you, it gives, it gives it some dimension. When it dries, it's not totally flat. It's kind of poofy in a way. Um, so this particular one is kind of my own home version, which is why it looks so strange. But um, at the store, you know, you can get it like this and it's just plain black no glitter, but it's, it's in a squirt tube, kind of like this. So that's probably what you'll see. This is my own homemade version. All right, so I'm going to come in and get this going. And you could do all kinds of patterns. I think here I'm going to do some big dots. This project is so fun just because you can try out so many different things and each one, it's like six little paintings all in one place. 
maybe that is why Jim Dine likes to do his like that. Because he really enjoys hearts, apparently. But I think he likes looking at it in lots of different ways. All right, so that's kind of how that would look. All right, so that pretty much does it for our show today. We are um, all done. We've got all of our hearts. We've shown lots of emphasis, and we've got a lot of variety as well. We've got some good balance going. So I think that wraps us up for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Now go out and make some amazing art.